We have been called to reach this generation with the love and gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Bishop Peter is obeying this higher call by preaching and teaching the word of God, both in Kenya and in many other nations of the world, supporting the weak and encouraging the broken-hearted. He and his wife Faith founded Overcoming Faith Church, which is involved in evangelism, church planting, leadership training, family enrichment programs and equipping the saints to serve. In their passion and love for the weak and neglected, they have established Happy Life Children's Home for Abandoned Babies, Happy Life Christian School and recently Jesse K. Children's Hospital. Thanks to the many friends and partners who have come along to make this happen. Glory and praise to our God. To conclude or probably continue with our January message on He is Faithful. Somebody say He is Faithful. And I say there are three ways that I know He's Faithful. One, when I look at the scriptures, I see the faithfulness of God. Number two, when I look at the works of God, all He has done, His creation, His miracles, His blessings, His provision. When I look at myself, fearfully and wonderfully made, I can say he's faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. And number three, I see the faithfulness of God when I see all that he is doing even now. Glory to God. And personally, in person, sometimes you can read it in the Bible and you can look around and see other people. But when you look into your life, you can see the faithfulness of God. And there are 10 attributes that I saw in the word of God. There are much more, but I, I saw 10 that it, that it declares and show the faithfulness of God. One of them is uh, he's faithful to a thousand generations. Can somebody say he's faithful? he's faithful? Number two, he's faithful when I look at his nature. Or that is his nature. Number three, he's faithful through his works. Number four, his faithfulness is a shield for us. Number five, his faithfulness will establish and guard you. I finished there last week. Number six, he's faithful to forgive. First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So our God is faithful to forgive. Glory to God. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So anytime the devil tells you you are not forgiven, remember this verse. That our God is faithful to forgive. Somebody say, I'm forgiven. Amen. And it does not matter what you did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It does not matter what you did. The Lord forgives everything. And he forgets. Hallelujah. So he is faithful to forgive. Number seven. He is faithful in temptation. First Corinthians 10 and verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. Please help me tell your neighbor it's common. What you are going through is common. Simwambie, kila unapitia ni common. Common ni nini? Ni ya kawaida. Hallelujah. Don't look at that situation and think, oh, this one is a new one from hell. No, it's common. Any temptation is common. Any challenge is common. What you are going through now, somebody else went through that 10 years ago. 20 years ago, 100 years ago. The apostles were there. Daniel was there in the den of lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were there in the fire. If you are in the fire, you are not alone. It's common. Hello. It's common. That fire is common. It was there with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It is common. If there is a place in front of you and there is no way, huh? like the Red Sea, 
when the Israelites wanted to go cross over, there was no, no way. That is common. That's why it's written in the Bible, God came and made a way for them. Because it is common. Sometimes you will come to a place where you think there is no way out. And the enemies are following you to finish you. But I want to say to somebody, it is common. If your family has issues, it is common. Hallelujah. So many other families have had issues and God healed them. So it is common. Glory to God. If you have losses, it is common. You are not alone. You are not the first one. And there will be other losses tomorrow and the day after. So it is common. But the good thing is not that it is common. The good is that God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. So anything that God allows to come to you as a child of God, God measures it. God makes sure you will overcome. Hallelujah. So carry your cross. Because God knows what you can handle and what you cannot handle. So if you see God allowing anything to come to you, then you must know that he knows you're going to conquer, you're going to overcome. Some of you keep asking, well, why is it not going to somebody else? Why me? Why me? Why not you? That's yours. Go through it. Fight that battle. It's yours. When mine comes, I fight. When your neighbors come, they fight. When that one comes to you, it is yours. And it is you who will overcome. In Jesus' name. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. With every temptation, there is a way of escape. Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor you are escaping? You are coming out. I feel like somebody is coming out right now even as we speak. Somebody is escaping that temptation right now. Somebody is coming out of that oppression right now. Somebody is coming out of debt right now. Somebody is being healed right now even as I speak. You are escaping through that temptation. Somebody is going to experience peace in their family from now. You have not known peace for three years, but from now peace is coming to your family in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Eight. He's faithful in keeping his promises. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. So God is faithful to keep his promise. And the Bible says all his promises are yes and in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, he's faithful. So any promise you see in the word of God, God will fulfill it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord has promised you this year to break all barriers. God is faithful to make sure that it is going to happen this year. The Lord has promised that this year you will do greater works than you have ever done. It is going to happen this year. In the name of Jesus. He is faithful. You will do great works. Or somebody say I will. Do great works. Somebody shout I believe. Yes. We do these things because we believe. And our God is faithful. So any promise you see in the word of God. If you see a promise on hearing. God is faithful to fulfill that promise. Hallelujah. If you need healing, that promise is yours. And God is faithful. If you need God to prosper you, his promise is there. He will prosper you. If you, got, you want God to enlarge your territory, like Jabez, he will do it. It's a promise of God. When God says you will be the head and not the tail, that's a promise of God. The Lord says you will be mighty in the land. You will do great works. Then the Lord says, and he means exactly that. You will do it. Can somebody say, I will. Number nine. 
The Lord is faithful because he is not a man. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will not do it? Or has he spoken and will not make it good? Let me remind you, our God is not like your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your father, or anybody who can promise and they do not do what they said. Many people, how many have ever been promised something by somebody and they never did it? Let me see your hand. Oh, some of you have never. So, maybe that's why you have a problem believing that God will do it. Because somebody failed you and you think now I don't trust anybody, including God. God is not like man. Hallelujah. Even if it was your wife or husband who said I will do this, I will do this and they never fulfilled their word. God is not like them. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do it? Or has he spoken and will not make it good? God will do it. Anything he has promised this year, he will do it. The things we have prayed for here this morning, they are already done. In the name of Jesus. The miracle you came for, it is already done. The dedication you came for, it is already done. Can somebody shout, I believe. And number 10, he is committed to be with you. That's the promise of God. Deuteronomy 1.6 be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Now, we are supposed to have both strength and courage. Strength is who we are. Courage is because we are able to step out and attack. Hallelujah. We can step out because we are courageous. There are people who are strong, but they can only remain within their territory. But when you are courageous, you step out of your territory and you go to the territory of others and get what belongs to you. Can you lift your hand and say, Father, give me strength and courage do not be afraid or terrified because of them again say with me every fear leave my life for the Lord why are you not going to be terrified or afraid for the Lord your God goes with you he goes with you in this year he goes with you in that marriage he goes with you in your business he goes with you in your family. He goes with you this year in every adventure, in everything you do. The Lord goes with you. And the church say, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, living is physical. Forsaking is, can be compared to emotional. God is with you physically and He is with you in His presence. Emotionally, He is with you. I've seen people who are, if I can use the, the, the example of marriage, there are people who have not been left, but they have been forsaken. You understand? Yani, you got married to somebody, they have not left you, but they have forsaken you. Did you see the difference? Emotionally, they are not there, but physically they are, they are there. And they provide everything, you know. They buy everything you need. They are there. In the evening, they are there around the sitting room. <laughs> yeah. You cook. You are eating. You eat together. But, emotionally, they are not there. That's why the Lord says, He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. So he will be with you physically and even 
emotionally he is with you. What a mighty God we serve. Can you put our hands together for this God? Now that you know that our God is faithful, there are a few things you need to do. Number one, put your trust in him. Put your trust in God. Now that you know our God is faithful, put your trust in him. Because if you know somebody is faithful, you can trust them. Number two, step out and do exploits of faith. Glory to God. Now because God has said, I'll be with you. You can do it. You are strong. You are courageous. Then what do you need to do? Don't just sit there and say God is faithful. Step out and do exploits of faith. Can somebody say, I'm stepping out and I'll do exploits. Number three, share with others about his faithfulness. Don't just keep it to yourself. I know God is faithful. I know he's faithful. I know he's faithful. Other people need to know that our God is faithful. Can I hear an amen? Somebody say, I will share with others of the faithfulness of my God. Number four, when you know that our God is faithful, spend quality time with him. If you know somebody is good, faithful, wonderful, excellent, then you want to spend time with them. Hallelujah. You know, if you know somebody who is good, people love to spend time with the good people. Tell your neighbor, I hope you are one of them. That it's not just by accident we are sitting together. You know, you want to spend time with the good people. You look for them. Hallelujah. If three days go and nobody calls you, and when they call you, it's only to ask for money. Then you need to ask yourself, am I a good person? Am I a faithful person? Why, how come that people do not want to spend time with me? Because people want to spend time with the faithful good people. Can somebody say, Lord, make me one. <laughs> Amen. Now, when you know that our God is faithful, spend time with him. Amen. And not just time, but quality time. Number five, when you know that our God is faithful, come worship him with others. Come worship him. You're not like being pushed and pulled. Please come and worship him. Please come to the service. Please come on time. When I see the faithfulness of God, I long to come and worship him. Hallelujah. I long to be in his presence. Amen. When I look at my friends, some of them we went to school with, some of the people who, who do not know the Lord, when I look at their lives, some of them who are still alive, I see the faithfulness of God. That's why nobody will push me to come to, to worship him. When we were coming this morning, I told my wife, look at that. There was a parking that was full. People have been drinking the whole night. And you wonder, how can people start drinking last night and this morning? And some of you even praying for two hours is a problem. Let me tell you, <laughs> you should be thanking God that he set you free. Because the devil, and you pay for it. Here we tell you to come for prayer, you're not paying for it. You come and worship God, you're not paying for it. But when you go to the other kingdom, nothing is free. Hallelujah. Can you imagine people are still drinking? The other day I saw them, 8 o'clock, they are still there. The parking is full, they are still drinking. And we say that club now will be shut in the name of Jesus. Can we say in the name of Jesus, that club be shut in Jesus' name. Some of them are witches. They witch people. They bewitch people. That's why they drink. When they get there, kuingia rahisi kutoka ningumu. Because I know when they get there, they don't plan to spend the whole night there. They are family people, big cars, men and women who have family. Why would you tell your children when you're coming in the morning and you're drunk, eight o'clock, nine o'clock? Where have you been the whole night? Now, when I look at that, we have mercy on those people. We pray that God will set them free. But you know what? Some of you are like them or even worse. And now the Lord has saved you and then you take the things of God for granted. 
when you know that our God is faithful, you desire to come. You don't think, oh, it's another Sunday. Oh my goodness. Oh, again, we are going to lead the worship. Again, I'm going to play the keyboard. I'm ge- again, I'm going to be a nasha standing the whole day. I dread Sundays. If you dread the Sundays, try something else. Oh, try something else. You run back here. Hallelujah. I'm saying you will run back here. You can imagine how much money they have spent the whole night. That's why when I know that God, our God is faithful, I want to come and worship him with other people. I will come on Sunday. I will come on Monday. We are entering, we are still in the season of prayer. When you know that our God is faithful, you want to come and worship him. Number six. When you know that our God is faithful, now that I know that our God is faithful, you give generously to him. You become generous to the ministry. Serving God is not a burden to you. Glory to God. When you remember that even all that you have, God has given it to you. You don't hold on to anything. You are faithful in your tithing. You are faithful in your giving. You are faithful in serving God. You are faithful in blessing other people. You are faithful in giving. You become generous. May the Lord give you the spirit of generosity. May the Lord give you the spirit of giving and sharing in Jesus' mighty name. Number seven, when you know the Lord is faithful, you labor for him. You work. Glory to God. You work. I love to see people working and serving God. Because if you are not serving God, you will be serving somebody else. So when you know the Lord is faithful, serve him. Amen. Serve him. Serve in the church. If you are not in some department, get into some department. If you have a good voice, join the praise team. If you can usher, usher in the house of God. If you can be in that intercessory, come and wash, you know, intercede. Serve the Lord. Glory to God. Teaching the children the word of God. Serve the Lord. Because you know that he is faithful. When you know that he is faithful, you serve him. You labor for him. Glory to God. Because you know that our God is faithful. You win souls. Amen. You win souls because you know that our God is faithful. Can you think if you never gave your life to Jesus, where would you be today? Amen. You follow them up like what Minister Weary and others do to make sure the people who come to church, the people who come to the Lord, they stand. You call them. You visit them. You pray for them. You pray for the new believers. If all of you would follow somebody up, the people you see, the new people, the new believers, then the people of God will be able to stand. Because you know that our God is faithful. You mentor people because you know God is faithful. Hallelujah. You mentor them. You get involved in worship. You join a small group. Everybody in the church should belong to a small group. You belong to the small groups because you know that our God is is faithful. Can somebody say God is faithful? Hallelujah. And, and let me tell you, in church there is a ministry for everybody. There is nobody can who can say in the church I don't have any place. Everybody in the church has a ministry. Find your ministry this year. As I conclude, let me say to you again, find your ministry. Find your place. Find where you belong. Can somebody say amen? Find where you belong. We were singing here earlier that my life is not my own. Do do you really mean that? If you believe your life is not your own, then you give it to whom it belongs. Can somebody say amen? Can you say again, my life belongs to him. So when you know he's faithful, even, even the ministry of visitation is a ministry. There are people who have a ministry of encouraging others. Whenever they hear somebody going through something, it bothers you. It's a ministry. Not everybody who will do that. 
Whenever they hear somebody is in hospital, they go to They feel, oh no, no, let me, just, let me leave everything and go and visit them. There's somebody who hear, when they hear a family has some challenge, they leave everything and go and help. I mean, that's a ministry. It's a ministry. Ministry to the prison. Ministry to the hospital to pray with the sick. There's a ministry for you. Please help me tell your neighbor there is a ministry for you in the house of God. Hospitality is a ministry. Giving is a ministry. Intercessory is a ministry. Children ministry is a ministry. Glory to God. I pray that this year there will be a lot of visitation even around us and among us. Hallelujah. Visiting one another, encouraging one another, praying in our houses. Can we stand on our feet? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. And our Lord, I praise you for your people that are here. May we leave this place having experienced your faithfulness. Having known your faithfulness. And having seen your faithfulness. If there be anyone here who has not known your faithfulness. I thank you because today you have revealed to them that you are faithful. Anyone who has ever doubted your faithfulness. Lord I thank you because today every doubt has melted away. And we have known and we have believed that you are faithful faithful. Father, I pray even for all those who are watching us and listening. Father, I pray that your blessing will be upon them. And you who is listening to this program, I want to say to you, God is faithful. Even if you have not given your life to him, I want to remind you, he is still faithful. And you can do that today at the very beginning of the year. You can say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Forgive me of all my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the kingdom of the Most High God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And now your name is in the book of life. If you can call us, send us a message. If you are near Thicker Road, come worship with us. We are right here at the Blessed House, opposite Garden City Mall. God bless you as you enjoy the favor of God.